Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last couple of videos we talked about NSA's uh, basic building blocks then we started talking about NSA's with the type ORM and Postgres MySQL. Now let's see all these things together how they look like. So what we are doing in the controllers we are writing the routes right forward slash get put post delete that is talking to the services and services will use the repositories of the respective model classes and these model classes are nothing but the repositories representing the database table either it is a NoSQL or a SQL okay and who are providing us these repositories these frameworks okay uh, I'm not always inclined to use these ORMs I mean you can also write a plain SQL queries just by using the MySQL client or the Postgres client but if you are using an ORM then it is just giving you the added on benefits but yes obviously if you are using ORM then you might be executing some additional code and the queries can be in the bulk but when you are writing your own plain SQL queries that is always best okay so here these ORMs SQLize, type ORM, Mungoose, Mungoose is ODM and there are other ORMs available for the RDBMS database systems that you can use I'm most familiar with these so these ORMs are exposing us the interface to talk to the database okay like I will be just injecting the repository in my service and my service should be able to talk to the user table to the address table to any particular table right so that target database can be anything Postgres, PC client, uh, MySQL and all these things even SQLite okay so this is how we are interacting with the database we are just using these framework layer in, in before talking to the database these framework layers are providing as the the different methods to talk to the database like query builder to even write your own custom query uh, they are providing the repository pattern to do to access the the table entity table and do the find find by IDs and all these different methods which are generic right find find by ID find by ID and remove and delete and all these things so the only important thing is okay let's say I got the table and I'm able to talk to this now other things which ORMs provide is a migration seeders like you are writing your services you also have created entities so parallelly we will also create entities entities means the database entities like user course university all these are entities okay now there are two ways to create the database I mean most of the ORMs are providing a DB sync utility I will talk one by one all these utilities there is a DB sync what it does is it actually looks at your entities okay you have created these four classes user university product uh, cart and all these things it will look into your database entities classes and it will co convert that into your database tables when you write npm run db sync that is called reverse engineering you are writing entity classes and you end up having the tables by writing a single command and it's like synchronization when you change some column it automatically synchronizes the table but that's not the approach for the production right because for the production you have to write your migrations okay if you are changing a particular column you will add a new migration and that migration will be triggered uh, using some some command line using npm run migration create sorry migration that migration will look into the migration folder so you will have some migration folder so you will execute the migration with the startup script of the project that will create all the respective tables okay that's another way this is for the local development db sync utility and finally you will do npm run um, execute migrations or something like that okay that is available in any of the ORM mongoose is no sequel so you don't need to create the query create the tables beforehand it automatically creates whenever it is doing the query but for the type ORM SQLizer for the RDBMS database you have to create the database first before doing the query so for that we will be using the migrations okay migrations are can be generated through the type ORM CLI or SQLite CLI these are the important CLI frameworks we have okay so let's jump into our code base 
So in the, in the last video, we were able to uh, create the table structure and all. Now what I have added is simply the entities, right? So in most of the database, it's not like we are going to have a single entity. We always have the many different tables and we have to take care of the relationship one to one, one to many, many to one, many to many. These all different kind of relationship you always have. And the only challenge is the understanding those relationship and writing that in the SQLize uh, entities or the type ORM entities with Nest.js. So let's say there is a post like you are writing a blog post and somebody is writing the comment on that. Okay. Somebody is writing uh, comments on that. So post will have a one to many relationship because one post can have a many comments on top of it. Right. That's what we have. So we have to use this one to many, many to one, one to one annotations for that. And there is a category also. So here we are trying to understand the relationships of one to one, one to many, many to one and many to many. I think do I have many to many? Let me check. First of all, one to one. A post will belongs to a single category. Right. So this is a one to one relationship from category and post. So this is my category like post belongs to uh, some one category belongs to one post and one post belong to one category. This is like a strict uh, relationship. Uh, there is a technology post, there is a business post, there is a political post, something like that, right? So it's like a one to one relationship. So we are, we will be adding this one to one annotation in the category and one to one annotation in the post. So one to one, this is, I'm inside a post, so I will I will be pointing to category which column this is the column name in the category entity and this is the column name in, because uh, we are in the post so it will be category obviously because post will maintain the category reference category will maintain the post reference okay I, I, I will push this and you will have a look onto this now one to many post will have a many comments right so this is like a one to many one post will have many comments. So try to understand it like this. So in the post whenever you are doing a one to many relationship means post will contain this one to many and comment will maintain many to one. So the annotation in the post will be one to many. Okay. And this is a single post pointing to many comments and which particular column post is the column in the comment. And this is the comments and it will obviously will be an array, right? So it's like a one to many. Now, if you go into the comment, this is one to many, sorry, many to one, because many comment will belong to one post, right? So many comment will belong to a single post. And here is the relationship of post. This is the comments is the column in the post entity. And in the comment entity, the reference will be post. And if you want to do, do the eager initialization and cascade delete mechanism, because what will happen is on delete cascade, that means whenever you are deleting a post, comments will also be delete, right? This is a delete cascade or there are two types of cascade. Either you just set the on delete to null, right? Or cascade. So if you are deleting any post and the comments will be deleted. If you are doing a set null, that means the, the foreign key. Now primary key is gone. So the foreign key in that table will be set to null. Okay, this is many to one. This is another table like a post will belongs to many posts will belong to a single user, right? So user with post is one to many. So if you see uh, annotation here somewhere, one to many yeah one to many for the post so one po one user will have a many post so this is one to many in the user entity and one to many will be array because here one user will belongs to many posts so if you are doing a reference of post it will be an array not a single post and then if you go to the post there will be a user reference that is talking about many to one yes here is many to one means many post can belong to a single user and the same thing the reference of user in that entity and what will be the column name here and when you run the npm run db sync or 
when you print db sync you will say then automatically these entities will be created the reference will be created which is a foreign key okay so let's look into this in the next video how these references are created then we are done with the relationship and association i mean you can easily understand these tags one to many one to one one to many many to many okay when to write how to write you have already seen when to many will be an array reference and many to one will be the object reference and here you can specify what what is the cascade relationship you wanted to achieve you can then do npm run db sync and then you will collect all the queries and you put all these in the migrations so let's take a look on to that in the next video